Hello and welcome back to the railway. This week we're going to have a look at Tryon Hornby's M7 class locomotive. She really is a lovely model. And we've got crew still in the original packaging there. The box does seem to have suffered over the years, but the locomotives remained very well preserved. We have a look at the end of the box here. We've got the model number R754 and it's just stuck on a paper label onto the box. And here we've got the information on the end of the box. It's an 044. M7 class tank locomotive with crew and firebox glow. We just got her out of the box here and we'll have a, a quick look at her before we get her on the track. She really is in great condition. There's barely any track time on those wheels. And I love this, the, the model number incorporated into the back form packaging, R754. We'll just pop her down, have a, a quick look at the crew. Still in their original packaging. And that staple seems to have gone very, very rusty there. I think we'll, we'll just leave those in there. We've got three pieces of paperwork. One concerning the firebox glow attachment and the number of the, the replacement bulb available from Trying Hornby stockists or direct from the factory. We'll just pop that down. Then we've got the Trying Hornby servicing scheme, which contains a very long list of stockists and dealers, not just in this country, but around the world. We've got all over the place. They really did ship worldwide, this group. And right on the back here, we've even got, in the USA, the Lions Brothers Inc. They really did ship worldwide. So we'll just pop that down and have a look at the instruction sheet. This is a fairly general instruction sheet. It does have the model number, R754, and the date, 14th to the 11th, 67. It covers a wide, wide range of aspects of the Tran Hornby system. I'll just have a look over it there. All sorts of things in di different motors. Boiling points for different styles of chassis and motors. The name at the bottom there, Rovex Industries Limited, Westwood, Margate, Kent, England. Just before we see the M7 in action, we'll follow the EM2 here with a load of freight back to the passing loop. Now she was model R351. She was available between 1961 and 65 in this livery. Now we'll switch points number five, the crossover, which will take her back into the passing loop move gently through these points. There's a lot of wheels here being pushed backwards over points, never the best of things. There she goes smoothly in and a gentle stop. There we go. And we'll switch those points and here we have the M7 with a short rake of green suburban coaches made up of Two brake coaches, which are R222, available between 1957 and 62, and a single composite, R223, available 1957 to 63. Slowing down gently now, as she approaches the station. Just look at that beautiful shot there, as she comes to a stop. One of the features of this model is the opening smoke box door. And if we have a look in there, we can see there is detail within it. I don't think we'll open this too many times because it is quite fragile. And we'll just ease that back again. And we can just see, we've got the running number there and we've got quite a bit of detail on the smoke box door. Now we've got the smoke box door safely closed, we can see that these hinges are quite fragile. This handrail really is quite, quite nicely done over the top here. Down here we can see the two prongs from the chassis which help hold the, the bodywork onto the chassis. We have metal buffers here pushed into a plastic buffer beam. There's minimal detail on here. There's a little bit of riveting here and there. And we've got one of Trang's D-shaped couplings. There really is an amazing amount of detail packed into this and the lining has been applied very, very nicely. Just look at all these bits and pieces along here. What I am quite surprised is that the coupling rod is unfluted. These steps are rather finer and I think they are quite fragile. 
We have the see-through wheels and she does have the magnesian. That fine lining continues right the way along the model. These numbers are rather large, 30027. Lovely handrails down either side of the cab door there and the steps are rather fine. We've got plastic wheels on the rear truck here. This rear truck is sprung loaded so it's got pressure applied downwards from a spring. We'll have a look at that in a moment. Again, as you'd expect, one of Triumph's D-shaped couplings at the back. Buffer beam, minimal on detail, painted red. Metal buffers pushed into the plastic shanks here. We've got what look like vampires on both sides and the railing around the, the top edge of the coal bunker I think is particularly nice. The coal load is quite fine and we've got these great round windows in the back of the cab. The lining on this side of the model is also in excellent condition. Detailing is slightly different down this side of the model and this chimney really is a, a beautiful shape. The cab roof has fairly minimal detail, there's no hatch or anything in here. We just have this one rail running across the top. These lovely arch shaped windows. I think this detailing here is just terrific. And she definitely has the magnesium there, look at that. That's really going to add to the performance. As model number R754, she remained in this black livery between 1967 and 1970. She was joined in 1969 by model R868, a gloss green variant. Now she remained in green through to 1975, but she changed to a darker shade of green and a different running number in around 1972. It seems a shame that this terrific looking black model was dropped from the catalogue so early in 1970, just leaving us with the two green variations till 1975, when these also were dropped from the catalogue. The M7 went on to be re-released in both green and black liveries in the mid to late 80s. There was model number R103, the olive green version, and R862, the black variant. Now we'll just bring her through points number eight there to a gentle stop and then we'll switch the points. Just a quick look at the underside of the model here. We've got the, the D-shaped coupling held in place here with a single flathead screw. And then we've got the front drive wheel here. This one links directly to the motor with the drive cog there. We've got the collection plate held in place with a single screw which also holds the rear truck in place there. And as we said earlier, we've got see-through wheels We've got plain coupling rods and we've got steel tyres on these see-through wheels. The magnesium magnet appears to be fitted just forward of the front drive wheels there. Here we've got the rear truck and it's got plastic wheels on metal axles. Just looking at the side here, we can see we've, we've got this spring here which gives a downward force to the rear truck to prevent it from jumping off the track. Looking at the underside of the body moulding here, we can see this unit here is the smoke box door detail we saw from earlier. Now I believe that's a separately fitted part just pushed into the, the main part of the body. And here we've got built in Britain and then we've got the model number R754. We don't appear to have Trying Hornby's name on this. It's interesting in the light here you can see the striations and the, the plastic moulding here. That's stress marks. And that's in fairly tidy condition. But what we can see is some sort of heat marks here from perhaps the motor or the wiring that's got too hot and it's actually begun to melt the bodywork which is a bit of a shame, I have to keep an eye on that. I'm looking further back down the model, we've got the boss here where the securing screw goes to hold the chassis onto the body and what you just see there, and the back end of the metal buffer has been pushed into the, the plastic bodywork there. The firebox glow unit it's just a plastic part clipped onto the metal chassis here. And we can see we've just got a, a little yellow piece of plastic there which, which gives us the colour. And we can see the little bulb there secured into place with these little plastic tabs. And the only real problem I can see with this whole model is the tops of these plastic tabs have been broken off at some point. They should have little round round bits in to push them into place. And they seem to seem to have been broken off at some point in the past. Now we were saying we, we couldn't see Trying Hornby's name on this model, but if we look on the underside here, if we look carefully, just get those wheels out of the way, we can just see it just there. It's quite fine in the plastic moulding there, it says Trying Hornby. We can see here on the rear truck, there's a sort of minimal detail in, in the casting there, and there is that, that spring which gives us the downward pressure which holds this 
onto the track to prevent it jumping off. I think that was quite a good idea. Here we can see the worm off the front end of the motor, which drives the cog on, on the bottom between the two drive wheels. I'll just turn that over there. So very basic, but the, the worm is brass and the cog on the drive wheel seems to be a nylon of some sort. This is just really in terrific condition. This motor just looks like new. There's hardly any time on it at all. You can just see the, the wiring here, which takes the power directly from the, the brushes here back for the, for the bulb for the firebox glow. Just coming back to the firebox glow unit, it's just plastic and it's clipped into the main part of the casting for the chassis here. We can see the clips there and there. Now, there is an extension plate here and the screw that holds the whole thing into the, the plastic body molding goes through here and this plate is held in place with a screw which must be underneath the firebox glow unit there. We can see the base of it there. I think this nice area here could be used for installing the crew just in front of the firebox. We'll just bring her through points number seven now so we can pick up the coaches. If you just watch this, she just clips the edge of the station there. The tail swing on this model is really severe. And then forward we go and we'll gently pick up those coaches. I think we have those. Now we're going to take her right around the layout towards points number eight so we can get her onto the outside line and onto the elevated section. I think that spring which holds the rear truck down onto the track also helps prevent the model from tipping over. I think there could be a real stability problem without that. Now we're approaching point eight there, smoothly through, and we'll close those up behind them. The firebox glow feature is a really great thing to have, but it barely shows up in these daylight conditions, and you'd have to run the model quite rapidly in order to see it. Just look at that. Approaching the incline there, beginning to climb effortlessly. And just listen to the sound that that motor makes. It makes a really echoey, growly sound within that bodywork. Looking really terrific, moving on to the bridge there and off into the distance. Now, as she approaches the downward section of the incline, we're planning to bring her to a stop just above the high mech there. Look at that, slowing down beautifully, gently to a stop. There we go. We'll have a swift look at the coaches. We'll just look at the ends of the boxes first. So here we have our 222 SR Suburban brake second coach. And here we've got our 223 SR Suburban composite coach. And these boxes are in fairly good shape. We'll just have a, a swift look at the other end of them. And let's turn all over. And we've got pricing on here, look. We've got eight and six. Our sticky label there, still got original sellotape here, and we've got eight and six scribbled in pencil there. We'll just pop these down for a moment. So the rake's just made up of the three coaches. I've got two brakes and a single composite coach today. So we'll just have a swift look at the brake. We do have quite different colours of plastic. I don't know whether we can see that or whether that picks up on the camera or not. So we'll just have a quick glance at this one. We have rib roofs on all of these. We've got the periscope detail here on the brake coach and none of these have seating. And they all share the same underframe detail, which is held in place by a clip and the roof securing screw. So we'll just have a quick look at that running number. We've got S4718S. We'll just pop that down. We'll have a swift look at the, the composite. We've got three first compartments in the centre of that. We've got a running number there of S315 3S. Again, no seating and ribbed roof. No periscope detail being the, the composite coach there. We'll just pop that one down. And we've got the, the other brake here, which is the, the darker one of the lot. Again, we've got the same running number, slightly different size in printing, I think. And again, the same roof detail. All three of these coaches have the open axle boxes and sleeved wheels. Let's just have a look at this one. You can see there, the open axle boxes. And we've got sleeved wheels, we can see the metal axle there. They both spin separately. 
We've got Brown's D-shaped coupling there just riveted in. We'll just have a look at the other brake. I think somebody's changed the wheels and the coupling on this other brake. At some point the wheels are just slightly finer scale, still sleeved, but we don't have any gap between them so that, that back to back is really fixed on there. And I don't think the coupling's a trying one, it's a slightly different design, a different, different variation on the, on the trying D-shaped coupling, but it still works. As well as having Triang's name on the underframe detail and made in England, the name appears again here in the green moulding. And next to it we've got some R numbers, we've got R120 and 222. So R120 was the maroon version of this coach. And then next to it, I don't know whether we can see, we've got R121 and 223. So 121 was also the maroon version of this composite coach. So the same mouldings were used for both the maroon and the green suburban coaches. And here we can see the detailing on the ends of the coaches, which have just been painted black. We've got the metal buffers and the D-shaped coupling. And this was the coupling that's been changed. And here's the other end of the coaches. Again, painted black, metal buffers, D-shaped couplings. We're going to move way uphill now. Now just watch this as she moves off. There's absolutely no wheel slip there. That magnesium really helping and the motor makes such a lovely noise. Now I think we're going to leave it there this week. I'm going to leave you with the cover of the 1967 catalogue from which Triang chose one of Terence Cuneo's terrific pictures of an M7 standing next to the engine shed. But in southern livery, unlike the BR livery, we see the model here today. Thank you very much for watching and if you look back again next week we'll have something else from the Triang Hornby period. Goodbye now.